Greetings, dear viewers. You are on the Cross Moto Channel. What do you know about the British motorcycle industry of the late 60s and the first half of the 70s? Resting on their laurels inevitably led to a severe crisis for both British and many other European and American motorcycle brands. The Japanese were taking over the market with reliable and high-performance machines that cost less than their European and American competitors. They were doing it very well. Many of these companies resisted the onslaught of the Japanese Big Four by experimenting with new engine and motorcycle designs. One of these designs was the Norton Challenge P86 with an engine developed by Cosworth. And I want to tell you the story of this motorcycle in this video. The Norton Challenge couldn't prevent the collapse of the Norton Company, but this story deserves its own episode. Enjoy watching. Let's go back to the late 60s. During this period, Norton was still benefiting from their commando model. In the 60s, this parallel twin was seen as outdated. Norton introduced an engine of this configuration back in 1948, and even at that time it wasn't advanced. It was a twin with 360 degree ignition, meaning both pistons reach top dead center at the same time, which makes the engine very vibration prone. By the late 60s, this twin's displacement grew from 500 cc in the 1940s to 750 and later to 828 to boost power. By the early 70s, Norton racers couldn't match Japanese bikes, even though the chassis remained decent. John Norton once built very successful frames for motorcycles, but the two-valve air-cooled engine producing at most 70 horsepower together with the fragile gearbox, were no good for the company's survival. It was necessary to create something progressive, both for racing and with prospects for the civilian market. In 1973, the Norton management turned to Cosford with a request to build a modern power unit that would become the basis for future civilian models and could compete on the racing scene. Challenge. The P86 was a motorcycle that was being developed to take on the Japanese and possibly even return the once dominant Norton company to the top of the market. Kit Duckworth, head of Cosworth Engineering, developed the engine using the championship winning 1966 Cosworth 448 Alv Formula 188 as its base. To give you some context, a little about the double four valve V8 engine. While people can argue endlessly about the best car in Formula One history, the best engine is much more clear-cut. The Ford Cosworth double four valve set new standards in racing at the time. A powerful, reliable, simple, and inexpensive three-liter engine. It faithfully served Formula One teams from the late 60s to the early 80s, one and a half decades of dominance in the racing world. The new motorcycle engine had the following requirements. Valve timing, two overhead camshafts and four valves per cylinder, and liquid cooling. Power output of around 70 horsepower for the civilian version and over 100 for the racing version, along with sufficient engine structural strength to get rid of the motorcycle frame. For the Norton Challenge, Cosworth engineers essentially cut two cylinders off the legendary V8 and mounted them on a newly designed crankcase. The result was an engine with the traditional Norton displacement of 750 cubic centimeters. And along the way, the design received a lot of upgrades. The overhead camshafts were driven by a single gear, but unlike the Formula V8, the drive was belt-driven, not chain-driven. As such, there was no motorcycle frame. The rear wheel swing arm, as well as the rear subframe, were bolted directly to the engine crankcase. The fork was attached to the front subframe, which in turn was bolted to the engine. In many articles, it is written that the Challenge P86 was ahead of its time by many years, or even decades in this regard. To some extent, that was true. The Norton motorcycle's design is impressive, but using the engine as a load-bearing element was conceived much earlier. For example, the German motorcycle Windhoff 
750 produced from 1927 to 1931 was built according to the same ideology. The work of the Cosford Company on the engine was carried out under the close supervision of representatives from Norton and Norton. It wouldn't be Norton if they didn't throw a few wrenches into the development process. To be honest, it would have been better if they hadn't gotten involved at all. They decided to add a few archaic features to the design. One of the conditions was that the twin had to run on a single carburetor to make it easier for civilian vehicles to pass emissions. And that required using the traditional firing order. That means it's a 360 degree twin again, and that promised strong vibrations. For a modern design that was unacceptable, the engineers at Cosford, gritting their teeth, designed a balancer for the engine, which added nine kilograms to the construction. To keep the engine stable, a large flywheel was needed, and Norton engineers again joined the project. They insisted on placing the flywheel between the cylinders, saying, that's just how it should be. Britain has built motorcycles for 60 years. It's proven. This nuance eliminated the possibility of installing a central crankshaft bearing, which in turn limited the engine's maximum revolutions per minute and increased the crank's flexibility. It turned out that the assembled engine weighed 88.5 kilograms and its moving parts weighed 34. For a racing motorcycle, that's, well, really a lot. The double four valve V8 engine had fuel injection, but for the racing motorcycle version, they used two archaic AMOL carburetors. The intake ports were designed for injection, but their cross section was unsuitable for carburetors, causing power loss. For the civilian motorcycle versions, they wanted to use only one carburetor. The end result was an engine that was, of course, better than Norton's previous units, but still fell far short of expectations. On the test bench, the engine for the racing motorcycle showed 90 horsepower at its peak, which fell short of the desired result. The design had several teething problems, such as a weak timing belt. However, further delays were impossible. By 1975, the motorcycle was built and raced at Brands Hatch. Took part is an exaggeration. He crashed into several motorcycles on the first lap. That was the first public appearance of the Challenge P86. And even though the accident wasn't Norton's fault, the impression was immediately a negative one. The subsequent races showed disappointing results. Norton was losing to the lighter and more successful designs of Japanese motorcycles. At the same time, Norton, as part of the Norton Williams Triumph Group, was in an extremely difficult financial situation. There wasn't enough money for the project, and Cosworth was mainly focused on their work in Formula One. In 1976, the parent company NVT was split up, and the Norton Challenge project ceased to exist with about 20 P86 units in various stages of completion getting lost. However, in 1986, one of the machines appeared in public. It was a machine called Quantal with a Cosworth engine. This engine was bored out to 823 cc and equipped with fuel injection. At the 1986 Daytona Battle of Twins, the motorcycle took second place, and in 1988, it took first place, showing that with proper modifications, this engine had good potential. A number of amateur articles about the Norton Challenge literally say the following. Here was an awesome development, but it didn't work out. It just wasn't meant to be. However, as you can see, the situation is much more interesting and quite logical. The project was carried out under conditions of haste and lack of funding. The British motorcycle industry had no guarantees it could pull itself up by this straw. But the main thing that ruined this promising project was rigidity and conservatism. That's how we've always done it. And it worked. As it turns out, times like these tend to end exactly this way. In the 1970s, the British motorcycle industry collapsed, all because of their own arrogance and the Norton Challenge P86 remains a dusty relic of what could have been. My story is coming to an end. As always, this was Cross Moto Channel with you. Thank you very much for your attention, as well as for your activity in the form of shares, comments, and subscriptions. Special thanks to everyone who supports the channel financially using the pinned details. See you next time.